Coach Davis, live from Brooklyn, and I'm back with another episode of Health and Discipline. Make sure you watch the whole video before you dislike. I got something to say, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Brooklyn vibes. You know, and I'm back with another episode of my semen retention, woman attraction story part four. And if you ain't watched part three, part three, part two, or the first one, before you even finish watching this video, make sure you go back, because you're not going to understand nothing. And I don't want you niggas to say, what the fuck is he talking about? Uh, uh, uh. Go watch the fucking videos and answer the question I asked y'all in part three. You know what I'm saying? Y'all going to see what I'm talking about when y'all watch it. And y'all know the vibes. Salute. I seen it was some funny nigga. You know what I'm saying? He commented on my shit last night, heavy crying. Nigga like, yo, this nigga look like he's scared because he keep looking around every three seconds, every time. Nigga, first of all, when I'm out here, I'm taking a fucking walk and I'm not just out here for y'all. And second of all, nigga, uh, I'm not scared of nobody. You heard? I done told y'all niggas what I keep on me while I'm out here. I got some stainless steel for your bitch ass if you think you going, anybody going to try me, nigga. I don't give a fuck who you is. You better respect me, nigga. And, nigga, it's nighttime, and I'm in fucking Brooklyn with a ski mask on, nigga. You would probably be scared, not me, because that's why I do this shit all the time, nigga. I'm not like none of these other senior retention channels, nigga. I'm, make, I'm bringing flavor to this shit. Why? Because I'm from New York, nigga. That's why. I'm from New York. <laughs> Brooklyn. But I'm from the Bronx, though. But since I'm staying in Brooklyn, I'm going to have a good time in Brooklyn. You feel me? I spent a lot of my time in the Bronx. So I'm enjoy Brooklyn. I spent a lot of my time in Queens. Now I'm in Brooklyn. Y'all know the vibes. But listen, part four, right? Add more to the story. Y'all know the vibes. If y'all seen part one, two, or three, um, yo, it's crazy what love will make you do, man. Cause like I told y'all, I felt like I was in love with Shorty, man. And it's crazy cause what's the name? Um. I used to look forward to even being in the shelter sometimes just to see her. It would be times we ran into each other just for a quick five seconds. And I get a text message on my phone from her talking about she happy she saw me. I made her day, this, that, and the third. And I felt the same way. You know what I'm saying? Ain't that beautiful? Love is beautiful, man. Oh, I know you. I know you probably saying it. Fuck out of here. <laughs> but yeah, that's what I'm trying to tell y'all, man. Like, love is beautiful. It'll make you forget about everything you're going through, if it's genuine, if it's real. I was forgetting about all that shit because I felt like I had somebody in my corner that was genuinely supporting me. She told me straight to my face, "I'm here for you. Anything you need, I'm here for you." And I almost cried when she said that, too. I mean, I'm an emotional nigga. I don't give a fuck. I'm a cancer, too. So, <laughs> y'all niggas probably cut my ass right now. Like, oh, are you a cancer? Uh, but, yeah, fuck out of here. Cancer gang. Fuck all you niggas that got something to say about cancers. And stop judging me because I'm a cancer. Stop judging other cancers, motherfucker. Because my birthday is July 22nd. And, um, I'm actually, what they say is that's a cancer slash Leo. So I got that fire and that water, motherfucker. I could be emotional and be cool. But like I told you, motherfuckers, I got fire, nigga. I got fire in me. But anyway, listen, man. That whole situation was crazy because I used to look forward just to seeing her, man. I remember I dedicated this song to her. And she loved that shit. Um, it's A. Marie. For all my, you know, shout out to all the niggas that really listen to R&B. And not just the Pandora niggas. The niggas really know the vibes about R&B. If you grew up with a black mother... And you know why she cleaning up the crib, she playing that fire. I dedicated an A. Marie song called Why Don't We Fall In Love. Because even the shit she was saying had, you know, was related to how I felt. She was like, what she said? She was like, so many things I'm going through. So much that I want to do. It starts to become so clear to me. Tomorrow ain't really guaranteed. So many things I'm going through. It's about time you knew the truth. Gotta act quickly, you and I To fall in love, so many reasons why Why don't we, why don't we, why don't we Fall in love <laughs> Yo, that shit, man That's my shit, though I still listen to that song, man I'm not bitter about what happened between us That's my shit 
But yeah, I didn't even tell y'all what was in the letter. This is crucial. So at the beginning of the letter, it said, Dear Miss Her Name. I'm not going to say her name. But it actually, I did some fly shit. And I put like, I shaded in my name. So technically it said Miss Her Name. But Miss Davis. And she fucked with it, obviously, because she hit me. She hit me after the, the shit. Uh, I told her, you know, I wanted, you know, her to have my daughter. I was bold, my nigga. I was very bold. I could have went very left, my nigga. That's what you niggas don't understand. That letter could have went left, my nigga, and I could have got kicked the fuck out that shelter, boy. Y'all niggas don't even know how bold I was, my nigga. That's why I'm telling you, that seamer attention shit. You don't give a fuck, my nigga. When you passionate about something, you gonna do what the fuck you wanna do. And this is why I'm telling you niggas to be disciplined. This is what God bless you with. Because he know what's in your heart. He know what you really wanna do. And he gonna give you the strength to do it. I be, I wanna rap too. I love music. I be in my room writing in my notebook and sometimes, you know what I'm saying, to put myself in a place where I wanna be. I stare at the fucking wall, my nigga. And pretend it's a camera there recording me. And I'm reading from my notebook, nigga. And I'm being passionate. And I'm letting my shit, I'm letting my soul bleed like I'm doing right now. You know what I'm saying? I don't be screaming and yelling because I got two roommates and those are my niggas. I ain't trying to disturb nobody. That's one of the main reasons why I stopped doing videos in the crib. And I come out here. You know what I'm saying? Because I be wanting to do this shit early. I want to do whatever I want to. And I don't want to think, damn, I don't want to disturb niggas. I, I. Cause I'm a respectful nigga, you know what I'm saying? That's how you supposed to be. You give respect, you get respect. You don't treat people however you want to treat them and think that you're going to stay out of trouble. Motherfucker, somebody going to put your ass six feet under, nigga. <laughs> yeah, bro. Niggas in there new to vibe. Hold on. You see that sun on me? Let me show y'all something. You see the glow? You can get it too. That sun was in my eyes crazy. But yeah, man. It got so crazy with niggas in the shelter new. One of my homies that I was cool with, right? The nigga, he seen us like we had one of those vibes where we get around each other. We start getting all blushy and shit, smiling. You know, we try not to make eye contact to avoid it. So, yeah. She, uh, you know, we had one of those moments in front of one of my homies in there. And the nigga saw it. And he was looking at me. He gave me one of them looks like he knew. <laughs> <laughs> and he was looking at me, he was like, yo, bro, what's up with y'all? And I'm like, damn. Because we not, you know, I ain't want to tell nobody because I ain't want to get us in trouble. You know what I'm saying? I'll get her in trouble because I can't really get in trouble. I, you know what I'm saying? I think she would get in trouble because she work as a staff. And, you know, the repercussions on her, I think, would be bad because, you know, you're not supposed to be a staff fucking with the clients. So, you know, that should sound like a porno or something, right? <laughs> but yeah, man. So... This is where it got bad a little bit. She fuck around and found out that somebody else knew, got mad and blamed it on me like I was running around like some bitch ass nigga telling everybody what was going on. You know what I'm saying? I was trying to figure out who would have did it because I don't know. But, you know what I'm saying? Somebody did it because she was tight, flipping on me and shit. She was like, somebody know. She was like, this is why I shouldn't have spoke to you. Uh, uh, talking all this, talking all this fly shit. And in my mind, I'm just like, damn, you know what I'm saying? I ain't want it to turn out like that. But she's saying people in there gossiping about us, talking about, we talking. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just like, man, I know she telling her friends that work there too, her little co-workers. I know they know. Because I could tell by certain, you know what I'm saying, how even certain, you know, uh, one of her friends in there was acting. I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, she know what's going on. But I wasn't going to say nothing. You know what I'm saying? One of my other homies, a security guard I was cool with. He was talking to a shorty in there, and one of my homies that I told y'all about, you know what I'm saying, um, another homie, this nigga was talking to one of the staff in there too, like, my nigga. Then one of my roommates was talking to the staff too, one of the baddest staff, and she had a, she was strapped, nigga. Fat ass. Bro, this is what I'm saying, my nigga, like, it's shelter and all that shit is not really as bad as you think, like, that shit was actually funny, my nigga, like, that whole situation was funny, bro. But yeah, you know what I'm saying? You see it? The crazy <laughs> shit too is like our vibe was so strong. Like we would have little arguments on the, through the text and all that. We'll get around each other. And you can still feel that, that, that like, what you call that shit? Like you can still feel that spark, that fire. And that was what really intrigued me. And I'm sure she felt it too. Because I'm like, yo, what? This shit is a strong shit. Like, it, th it, it was throwing me off. I lose my train of thought and shit. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? But yeah, like, 
you know, you know, you, she was doing our extra shit. She blocked me and this and that, saying she didn't want to talk to me. But then we get around each other, and the vibes, you could see it. She would still get a little blushy. She would still act like she don't see me. You know what I'm saying? Still smiling and shit like that. I would too. And then, of course, when we wasn't around each other, she'll go back to acting like she don't fuck with me. Like, that's what a lot of women do. Like, don't let these women fool y'all with this social media shit and how they act through the text message and over the phone. Because, see, women can't control in person how they feel about you. This is why most women are afraid of a nigga like me. Because they know how powerful I am. When they get around me, I'm in control. But I don't use that against nobody. But listen, that's the power that you have when you're on this journey. They're going to try to hide from you in person. You're going to go through that too. It's not going to be all sweet and, you know, sugar and spice, my nigga. You're going to be powerful and they are going to be intimidated by you because of that. So you got to learn how to also maintain and deal with that shit too. But guess what? When they get in front of you and you, you're going to know, you're going to know. This is one of those things like when you know, you know, like it's like that. You're going to get around them, whoever it is that you have in your little situation with. And she doing all the playing over the phone or through text or blocking you and all that dumb shit. You're going to know the vibes when you get around her. It's, it, you know what I'm saying? It's not going to change. Like you can't. That's something that you can't change because it's genetically in their DNA to, you know, as women to be most attracted to the man that can have, that has the most sperm and the best sperm so they can have the best seed for, you know, that can have the best child, the best, you know, the best fluid for their child because, you know, our semen is the most powerful fluid in our body, nigga. Because if you put blood in a bitch pussy, what's going to happen? If you got some sort of disease or sickness, it's just going to transmute and she going to get that shit. So blood is not even powerful. And that's second place. So our semen is the most powerful fluid we got. So you got to be disciplined with that fluid, bro. It's like you have no choice because how you expect to live your best life if you're not, you know, if you're not disciplined with the most powerful fluid that you have in your body. That's really all you have is a man. Why you think, I mean, you know, this might be contradicting and, and controversial, but like I said, I'm going to tell y'all the truth. I'm going to tell y'all why I think, you know, it's men out here that think they gay. It's because, you know, they might have been growing up their whole life ejaculating too much. And if testosterone is what make you a man, then what you think is going to happen if you don't have no testosterone? You're going to have more estrogen than testosterone. And we have estrogen in us too, but we supposed to have more testosterone than estrogen. You know what I'm saying? That's just my opinion. Don't, you know, I, I don't, I'm not trying to knock gay people. You know what I'm saying? You know, but that's just my opinion because it just makes logical sense to me. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, man. You know, that's part four. I hope y'all fucked with it. I hope y'all appreciate my honesty. I'm just trying to keep it real with y'all because I'm not doing this for follows and for like all that other shit. I'm just really kicking it to y'all because y'all know how I am. If y'all been subscribed for a minute, if y'all fuck with me. Make sure y'all go not only to part three and part two, but y'all make sure y'all go to part one as well. And y'all go to all my videos because I'm spontaneous. Every single one of my videos got a message in there that's unique and a message that, you know, you could, you know, I'm not predictable. Like, I just, you know, I do whatever the fuck I want to do. So you're not going to ever know what to expect from Coach Davis. You're not going to never be able to figure me out. And any YouTuber that may be watching me trying to steal my shit, good luck, motherfucker, because I am unique. And sometimes I even, you know, sometimes I even outthink myself and do some shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, who would have thought I'd be out here in the middle of Brooklyn with a ski mask going yelling and screaming in the fucking morning, my nigga? Niggas ain't going to be doing that because why? Because people care about what other people think about them. And if y'all think I just come into the park and throw the ski mask on, you got me fucked up because it's cold. I don't know if you can see that shit. I walked to the park with this shit on. People looking at me a little scared. Guess what? I don't care because people scared of me anyway because I'm tall and black. So, fuck, I don't care. Police saw me with this shit and all that. So what? I ain't out here trying to hurt nobody. Shit, I'm out here trying to get money. And I'm out here trying to keep it real with the people and inspire the people. But y'all know the vibes. It's Coach Davis, live from Brooklyn. And that's part four. Salute.